Hello and welcome to Studio Code. In this master series, today we are going to talk about what happens after you get your admission letter and you get an admission to Georgia Tech. If you have not watched the first video where I have explained how you can apply to the program, the eligibility criteria, cost, etc., you can refer to the first video of the series. The link is in the description. And as for today, we will discuss that you have applied and you have got your admission letter. What happens now? Once you get admitted uh, to uh, the Georgia Tech program, you have to decide and uh, make up your mind around what is the specialization that you are going to pursue. Ideally, you should have this in mind while you're writing your statement of purpose, as I have explained in the previous video. But if you still are undecided, you just need to check that what kind of specialization are you going to uh, pursue, right? Uh, Georgia Tech offers four specializations as are listed here and under each specialization there are five subjects that you have to pursue compulsory like five subjects are mandatory and rest five are electives and as we have discussed in the previous video the requirement is to complete 10 subjects to earn 30 credits each subject is uh, equivalent of three credits and as for the specialization you will have a list of subjects which uh, can be found on the specialization pages uh, and, and the link is in the description you have to choose from these five subjects as per the conditions that are described and the rest five subjects you are electives so that you can choose from all the courses that are offered in the online program those elective subjects can also be the mandatory subjects for another specialization for, uh, let's say that uh, machine learning specialization has some subjects right i can if i'm pursuing a uh, specialization in computing systems and i have completed my five subjects i can choose uh, a machine learning specialization subject as my elective as well right so it completely depends on you what you want to choose as your electives right so this is about uh, the specialization and the subjects now how would you get to know that uh, what are the uh, what are the details of a subject and what is the syllabus and how the subjects are uh, rated etc right so there is a website known as oms central uh, it has all the reviews of all the subjects by the students who have pursued those uh, courses or subjects right in this website you can uh, find out the rating of the subject the amount of workload that is required how much time you would have to put in what is the content of the course how, what would you learn in the course etc right so you can decide from uh, this list uh, which subject you want to pursue as soon as you start with the degree uh, you would want to know like what would be what would the format be right so the format is like this all the lectures are delivered uh, online through some uh, platform earlier it was uh, udacity but now they have changed and they have their own platform where you can watch the lectures so lectures uh, are a part of every course in every course you're, there are going to be lectures that you would have to watch and learn the theory from right the second part is the projects and the assignments some subjects will just have projects some subjects will just have assignments like writing reports running some uh, programs like writing algorithms uh, running programs etc and then reporting the same right some project some subjects will have a combination of both there can be uh, projects as well as assignments and there can be quizzes as well plus there can be exams right so it depends on the course that you're pursuing what that course offers either there can be just assignments and no exams or there can be assignments and exams there can be individual and group projects or there can be a combination of all of these right it completely depends on the course most of the projects are individual projects but some courses have a uh, group projects right from the start so right when the course starts you have to form a group or the professors help you professors and tas help you uh, form a group and you can start uh, with a group project so this is about the content of the courses and the subjects right now talking about the workload so minimum like even if you try to take the easiest subject minimum it will take you around five to seven hours per week of dedicated time to watch the lectures do the assignments write quizzes etc right and this is i'm talking about the easy subjects the difficult subjects however may take up to 20 hours per week or 30 hours per week and such reviews are there in oms central as well and i'm also telling this from personal experience difficult subjects like one of that i have pursued like uh, operating systems or uh, computing etc that takes a lot of time and that needs a lot of dedication and hard work so this is about the workload so whenever you're trying to uh, choose a subject just make sure that in in that in that particular three or four months what are your plans how much time can you dedicate to studies if you are if you cannot dedicate much time try going for an easier subject if 
if you have a lot of time you can go for a tough or, or a um, uh, time consuming subject right also one advice i would give as soon as you start in your first semester try to only take one subject rather than two subjects because in the first semester you would have to get used to a lot of softwares and tooling that is used in the program right uh, there are community platforms like piazza and ed uh, and there is a, a lecture delivery platform there is uh, one a uh, registration platform canvas so many things are there and you have to get used to them right you have to set up a lot of things so i would say first semester go with a easy or intermediate subject and just take one subject get the hang of the program and then next semester onwards you can increase your load now talking about uh, the community and the help that you can get some professors hold regular office hours uh, whenever they are running the course they are usually one or once or twice a week and there are tas who run the course so tas are always available to help you via emails or slack or there are different platforms like piazza etc where you can uh, just ask for help directly from tas or professors and there are a lot of people who are ready to help you so the community or the people with whom you are pursuing that subject those people are also uh, are also going to be very helpful for you to get through the program now you would want to know that where is the hard part in all of this right the hard part uh, for you is to pursue the actual course right the lectures that uh, amount to some hours uh, some 30 40 hours per semester are just the tip of the iceberg and usually the least important part of the whole course the most important part of the course is are the projects and assignments and the exams that you have to do right so uh, projects uh, usually the description itself is around 10 pages that what you have to do in the project but the good thing about that is that the project descriptions are very detailed and once you understand what you have to do you can uh, plan it out uh, how you are going to implement your assignments or complete your work right you should always ask for help from tas and your uh, peers that how they are going about the project and there will be a lot of community help available for you to sail through the projects right but uh, my advice would be that start very early if you wait till 11th hour to finish a project it is going to be really bad you are going to end up in tears that has happened to me so i would say always start ahead of time as soon as the project is released start working on, on it and work every day for 2 hours 3 hours so that you don't get fatigued to towards the end of the submissions coming to exams all the exams uh, in the program are proctored where you have to do a full room scan you have to scan everything you have to show what is on your desk and everything you cannot use headphones etc so exams are uh, proctored very closely and even a smallest violation like someone ringing the doorbell or someone talking will flag it as violation although you will get uh, outside of it uh, because it was like like a genuine disturbance but uh, don't uh, please make sure that you don't uh, uh, use any means to cheat or talk to someone or keep any papers under your desk don't do all of that because you can get caught and uh, in that case usually uh, you are given a zero or you might even be suspended from the course so i would say that cheating in exams is not worth it so don't try to do that because exams are uh, uh, proctored very closely and also Uh, exams are slightly difficult in nature some exams are open notes and open books exams which are even more difficult and some exams are closed notes and closed books which are okay in terms of uh, difficulty level right uh, exams can be objective as well as subjective it depends on the course again and it depends on how much you have prepared there are a lot of material uh, to prepare and you can get help from people who have already you know graduated from that course you can get access in the to previous uh, papers in the in the a community but usually you have to prepare well for exams one of the difference that you will feel uh, in pursuing this program is that a lot of it is practical and uh, project driven right you have to work on a lot of projects you have to write a lot of code and that actually helps you upskill a lot that helps you understand how people work in a team how people work in a project what is the kind of uh, code quality that you are writing what are the kind of problems that you are solving so that helps you in maturing uh in your people skills as well as in your technical skills a lot and so be ready to have this mindset shift if you are coming from an indian university that you would have to do a lot of projects you would have to do a lot of coding and there will be very less uh, theoretical part when you are pursuing this these subjects again coming to the workload the end of the semesters can get uh, somewhat uh, difficult because there will be a lot of exams and uh, 
uh, project submissions towards the end of the semester but uh, trust me all that hard work uh, pays off once the semester is over and you get good grades and you have learned like you will get the feeling that you have learned a lot and you have upskilled a lot so all of that is worth it but it does get difficult towards the end of the semester you might have to put in two or three all nighters uh, in order to finish your work so be be mentally prepared for all of that hard work if you are uh, planning to pursue uh, harder subjects or if you're planning to pursue difficult subjects in any of the semesters Lastly, I want to cover uh, the cheating in projects as well. Uh, they have very strong uh, plagiarism uh, tools and automation tools that can detect plagiarism even from outside the internet and the submission of other people that they have done over past few years. So if you find a solution uh, online for any particular project, do not try to cheat because you will get caught. And if you will get caught, then there will be a proper uh, court and trial system. You will be reported to the ethics committee. Then ethics committee is going to collect all the evidence and they are going to ask you why you have cheated, how you have cheated this and that and it, you it, you might end up with a zero grade for one whole project or you might also end up with uh, a suspension from the subject itself and you will earn a bad reputation so all of that will not be worth it it will be much easier for you to study and implement your solutions rather than cheating so do not try to do that okay and lastly for workload uh, i forgot to mention one thing uh, you need to understand pairing of subjects right so let's say you're planning to take two subjects or three subjects per semester for three subjects you need special permission from your advisor and your professors but for two subjects you don't need any permission so whenever you're trying to prepare for uh, those uh, two subjects try to pair uh, one difficult subject with one easy or medium subject right do not try to uh, do two hard subjects in one semester because that way you won't be able to focus on the subject and learn and it will result in poor quality of projects poor quality of work so better uh, match and pair your uh, subjects like one hard and one medium so that you can uh, focus on the harder subject and while also uh, doing the work of the medium or the easy subject so this is how you can make sure that you end up with good grades in both the subjects and also uh, make the most out of the learning from both the subjects. The last tip that I want to give you uh, when you are in the program and when you are choosing the subjects, uh, there is a registration window that opens uh, for you, like there will be a time period that opens for you when you can register the subjects, right? And usually uh, the popular subjects or the subjects which are mandatory for different specializations, they get waitlisted, like the seats get over and you are put in a waitlist or sometimes those subjects also get closed for registration, like the seats are full and you cannot get uh, a seat into that particular course, right? What you can do is whenever your registration window opens, you will get a mail uh, beforehand, like your registration window is going to open, keep checking your mail, this and that. Once your registration window opens, what you can do is you can always pre-decide what are the subjects you're going to take. And as soon as your window opens, just enter those uh, register uh, your subject numbers or codes and try to register as fast as you can. I made that mistake that uh, I usually used to register one or two days after the registration opened and I... Uh, struggled a lot to get the subjects that I wanted to and even I had to sit out uh, for one semester because I couldn't get the subject that I wanted right so there is going to be a little uh, this is going to be a hard a little harder part when you're trying to register so keep in mind that you have your plan uh, beforehand you have the subject IDs and as soon as your window opens just register for them as soon as possible but also in some cases when a subject is really popular and the wait list is longer they tend to increase the seats so let's say for one particular subject they have 300 seats but the wait list has gone to 1000 seats right so in that case they will increase the seats from 300 to 600 or up to 800 so that they can uh, offer the subjects to as many people as they can so this is how your life is going to look like once you decide to uh, pursue OMSCS and once you get your admission letter. I would say that you might have to say goodbye to a lot of weekends. You have to might uh, say goodbye to a lot of things that uh, your other friends might be doing or other peers might be doing because it is going to be difficult to balance this out with a job. So be mentally prepared for that. Be mentally prepared for a lot of uh, hard work and a lot of evenings uh, of working. But if you have set your mind to it and if you want to do this, then that is the cost you would have to pay. I have tried to cover uh, almost all the as aspects of whatever happens after the course and during the course after your admission. But if there is something specific that I have missed or something else that you want to know what happens during the course, you can always uh, add your questions in the comments. We can do a follow up video or I can try to answer the comments and I will try to give you as much info as possible. 
with respect to subjects and OMS Central and reviews, etc., all the uh, relevant links are uh, there in the description. You can check out those links. And if you have any doubts about that also, please feel free to add in the comment. Let me know if you liked the video and this information was useful to you. And in the next video, we will talk about the online and offline aspects of this degree. Till then, take care. See you in the next video. Thank you.